Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 25. If we have our Bibles here, Genesis chapter 2, 18 to 25. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Are we all there? Genesis 2, 18 to 25. If you are there, say yes. Still open our Bibles. Are we all there? Yes? Awesome. So I read from verse 18. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave, them, gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to the beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her up to, unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. And shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. 25 the last verse. And they were both naked. The man and his wife. And were not ashamed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. So the scripture we have just read is the foundation of marriage. That was where marriage started. God himself, the author of marriage, showed to give us that sort of you know, description of what it was like. How the woman was created out of the man, all right, taking the rib of the man, and the woman was created. But the emphasis for tonight is in that verse 24 and verse 25. It says, therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother. Somebody say leave. Cleave, say cleave, cleave, unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Somebody say one flesh. One flesh. And verse 25 says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. It is extremely important that we realize that when it comes to the two of them becoming one, it is not something that happens in an instant. That scripture says that, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Another version says they will become. Somebody say become. Become means it takes a time. It's a process. So quick question, everyone. There is a mixture right in front of us here. And I can tell you, I can give you a cue. That this is a mixture of two um, soft drinks that are very popular. Can anyone guess really quickly? Which? Wow. Wow. Some people are so fast. <laughs> somebody, must have, somebody must have gone to shop with Brother Mala. <laughs> so, all right. What were, what were the answers again? Coke and Fanta. All right, let me ask you a question. Originally, let's assume that um, maybe you didn't know before. Would you have been able to really say, okay, maybe this was Coke or this was Fanta? Probably not, right? Or if, maybe if I didn't mention to you that there were two mixed together, maybe there's a likelihood you would have said this, is, this was Coke. And maybe you could have said, maybe not necessarily Fanta because, you know, but the mixture isn't too obvious, isn't it? All right. This is what God wants marriage to look like. To the point that no. To the point that no one can see the difference between you both anymore. Thank you. 
Praise God. Thank you, Brother Mala. So, this is a frozen Coke, and this is a frozen Fanta. Before we all got married, we were all like this. Frozen. Single people, this is you. <laughs> and maybe some married people too. <laughs> yes. Still frozen, I love that. Still frozen, yeah. Frozen in a fridge for many years. Through your upbringing. Yeah. Culture, background, childhood traumas, lifestyle, habits, your mindsets. Baggages and so on. Frozen. Well, you see this bowl is the system God brings into place. For both of you to come together, to now begin to melt and become one. That eventually, we don't know who is who anymore. If we still can tell who is who in your marriage, you are still either in the process of becoming one, or you are frozen. And no one can force anyone to melt. Nobody. There are some people who have been married for 30 years. Nobody can change them. Because they have refused to let go of their upbringing. Yeah. Their mindset, their culture, their tradition, all that they know. You know. And some people will just say, this is how I am. You met me like this, and this is how I'm going to be forever. If you cannot take it, leave me alone the way I am. You know. And it's interesting because you cannot actually truly become one without melting. If you choose to remain like this, there will continue to be conflict, strife in that marriage. You would not be able to fully enjoy the blessings of the marriage, the kingdom marriage that God actually has designed for you. So in order for us to be able to truly become one flesh that God designed, it's important for us to melt, to become liquid. And becoming liquid doesn't happen all of a sudden. It takes time. If we want to drink this Fanta without waiting for it to melt, it will be, I, I don't know how we're going to drink it. You will shake it and shake it and shake it. <laughs> you know, it will be very hard. The only way we can enjoy this Fanta is how? When it melts. And it's the same thing with the Coke. And that's us allowing the Holy Spirit to break us, to melt us, so that we can, and, you know, and also our spouses. Because it's tough. Sometimes we don't want to change. We want to be who we are. Just leave me the way I am. How many of us have told our spouses that? Yeah. Just leave me the way I am. You know. And the Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. So a frozen Coke is not good for anybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So God wants us to melt. And that's what we want to talk about today. And please... I don't, I don't know how many years you've been married. But it's possible that you've been married for 30 years and you have not yet melted. It's, poss it's very possible. In fact, you are still in the freezer. It's very possible. So it's not about the number of years. In fact, some people have adapted to be frozen. Husband is frozen. Wife is frozen. Yeah. And... And they're living a life of, like, independence. Under the same roof, but Yet, separate yeah. lives. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, some of them are coming to church. They come to church even in the same car. Well, the, most of your ones are the ones that come in different cars. Can I tell you the truth? We were like that too. So we're not here to talk about being a saint. For those who follow us, who may have watched some of our podcasts, we have been on the brink of divorce before. Because we came into our marriage frozen. frozen. Everybody, everybody comes to marriage frozen. Everybody. The question is, would you allow God and your spouse melt you? That's the question. Marriage is hard. Marriage is hard. It's because we are frozen. Until we allow God to begin to melt us. So I came into the marriage as a firstborn. Yes. I mean, a firstborn here. Let me see your hand. Ah, you know now, firstborns, you always have your way. Right? And she too was a firstborn. firstborn. She, she's the firstborn. <laughs> So we both came together with our strong coconut mindset. head. <laughs> In Nigeria, we say coconut head. Co coconut head means strong. strong very strong. Very strong yeah. head. And strong personalities too. Strong personalities. Yeah. I, 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 I always said I wanted a wife like my mother who never talks back at my father. <laughs> but when I married this woman, <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> I talk one, she give me the other. <laughs> <laughs> you talk one, <laughs> and I talk one. You give me two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, "What? Eh? I married wrong." <laughs> yeah. Sincerely, because she was not like my mother. She was not anything like my mother, and still not, and never will be. So the question is: Is that a wrong marriage? Then is that a wrong woman? No. No. And listen, you can't force anyone to melt. Yeah. Because that's what we try to do. We try to force that person to be, like if I force her to try and become my mother, it just would not work because she's not yeah. my mother. We came also into, into marriage with lots of expectations, you know, lots of standards. You know, you've seen people's, my, I've seen my parents' marriage, you know, it was like this. So I want my marriage to also be like that. Yeah. I want my husband to be like my father. And when he was not meeting those expectations, I took the frustration out on him. You know, um, for sort of like a background story, I, I came into New Zealand. He was, he's been living in New Zealand for a while. But I left Nigeria where I, you know, I, where I trained. And I left everything to come be with him. You know, and part of what was the challenge or the struggle in our marriage was... Getting to New Zealand, I mean, it was quite isolating. I left my family, I left my security, I left my friends, I left everything that I knew to come to the unknown. You know, and I realized that it was not how I had imagined it to be. I felt very isolated. I felt like I didn't have anybody, you know, and I wasn't getting the, um, the attention and the affection and the appreciation you know, and I used to tell him that I left everything for you, <laughs> you know, and he wasn't giving me all that I wanted to get back. And we began to have lots and lots of misunderstandings at the time. Yeah, and we, we, we were frozen for a very long time. Very long time. To the point that two, three years into our marriage, we were already using the D word. I think, I think this is not working. Yeah. Um, and, and, and wishing we had married somebody else. And to the glory of God, it took a while. Somebody say a while. A while. <laughs> a while to realize that it is okay to be different. Mm. It is okay for her not to be like my mother. It is okay for me to have those expectations. But what is not okay is that I begin to expect that she's forced into in a kind of submission or a kind of a way. No. Subjugation. No. What is not okay is that I also remain frozen with my own mindset as well and not show her love and affection and expect her to show me respect and honor at the same time. It's not okay. So what then changed? And that's what we want to talk about today. Because I can tell you, there are people who are married for long 
and yet, yet are still like this. So how do we correct that? And for those of us who are melted, some people also melt halfway. Mm. <laughs> Not completely. Yeah. We, we have, to the glory of God, we counsel a lot of marriages. Yeah. People melt halfway. Mm. Oh, this is the, this is, I can only afford this much of melting. <laughs> Beyond that is too much. So guess what? They just, they, they give you that part. But anything more than that, they don't yeah. want. But guess what? The Holy Spirit wants you to melt completely. Mm. Can I shock you? It is one of God's goal in marriage. To make you melt completely. If marriage doesn't melt you, nothing else can melt you. That's the truth. God designed marriage to melt you. <laughs> somebody say amen to that. Amen. Yeah, that's why he gave you somebody completely different yes. from you. Have you noticed? How come you got attracted to this person that is completely different? <laughs> I, have you ever, you, you understand what I mean? Yeah. You like to talk a lot, all of a sudden you, you are in, radically in love with this person who is so quiet. And all of a sudden you now got married. You are now wanting them to now start talking. And I'm like, ah, you fell in love with this? This person, yeah. How come now you now want me to start talking? But that's the way God, God did it in such a way that that person will eventually break you. And guess what? That part of you that always talk, God wants to also mend it together with quietness a bit. You understand what I mean? In my, in my marriage, I'm the loudest. Like you probably can guess in the last, <laughs> in the last few, few minutes. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But she, in my, if you come into my car, my music is always loud. Oh, mama. You start hearing it from like 100 oh, meters me. away. <laughs> <laughs> my wife will be like, ha. Ah. Amen. Amen. Somebody say we are melting. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. What we have realized is God wants us to leave. Somebody say leave. leave. Cleave and become one flesh. Please don't have a hardened heart about what we are about to share with you. Because this could not just save your marriage alone. This could change your life. Whenever a marriage is not working, lives are not okay. That's the truth. You cannot build up resentment and bitterness for a long time against your spouse, and your life will be okay. So we are not just about talking about marriage alone. We are talking about your life here. This is so important. So what does it mean to leave? Yeah, when, you, when, we, when we say leave... Um some people think it's just the literal, as you know, the literal meaning of leave, like leave your father's house, and, leave your, and mother's your mother's house, house, and things like that. But it goes beyond that. What I didn't realize when I got married was, even though I had left Nigeria to Auckland, New Zealand, Nigeria had not left me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had left. I have. Le I had left my parents' place and all of that. But like Lot's wife, I was still mm. looking back. I was still looking back and I was still wishing, you know, I wish I was there. You know, look at my mates, see, see how they are progressing. Why am I, I, I felt like I was being, I was stuck where I was. So I did, I, I did not fully leave. And because I did not fully leave and the comparison and all of those things, I was taking out that frustration on my husband and it really caused a lot of friction in our homes. And when we say leave, apart from just leaving your father's house, there's also leaving, you know, your friends. Some people, they have refused to leave their friends. You know, they have refused to leave father and mother. They, you know, you get into marriage and it's like your, husband, your, your, your father or your mother is the one in control. I take priority over your, yeah. Over and your when Bible says the man should leave, it's because he would now become the head of the home. But I also believe the woman, it's important for the woman to also leave. Because if she does not leave, she cannot cleave also. So if the man leaves and she, she refuses, she just, she just remains there, you know, then it will be very, very difficult. There are many people who are like, daddy's girl. You know, I, I, I remember counseling a girl who, a lady who, you know, every time she got married and every time her husband wanted to make a decision, but my, let's ask daddy, what would daddy say? 
What would daddy say? You know, at every decision her father or her husband wanted to take, she always had to say, we need to go and check with my father. So she had refused to leave. And that mentality was causing a lot of friction in her own home. So when we get married, we don't, we don't, it's not an extension of my father's house or my father's family or my mother's family. It's now a new unit that both of you need to realize that, yes, we, are, we now need to make our home what God desires. Not based on our culture or based on our tradition or based on what they used to do, but what does God want for this new home? And some people have not left hold styles. Mm. There are some men, they are still the party animals that they were before they got married. Still frozen. There are some people who, the, the way, the, literally everything they used to do while they were single, they are still doing it. 20 years into marriage, 15, and the problem is some people will say, oh, but my wife, my wife is okay with it. No. She may not tell you, but she, maybe she's just adapted to living that ind independent lifestyle without you. There are some people who are also not left ambitions that could hurt their family. You know, there are some ambitions you can have as a single person, but you cannot have as a married person. Because it will hurt your home. You will not have the time for your children. You will not have the time for your spouse. But there are some people who are still eagerly and crazily pursuing those ambitions. Because they have not left. Now when you got married and you are in this bowl, right, and you are truly one, what it means is you cannot just follow an ambition that your wife or your husband is not in support of. Or the one that will hamper and jeopardize that home and the marriage that you have. We have seen people who have taken jobs in the name of ambition and they abandon their homes and their family. To leave means that you need to leave all the things that will not be in support of this melting that God is trying to do. And some people, have, some people like that. Why? Because they see it as freedom from their spouse. But that's not what God wants. Mm. So that is, that's what it means to leave. leave. Some people have not left their exes. Preach. Yes. You are still texting the ex 15 years after get, getting married. Because that's the ideal partner. This, your current partner, is as, your current wife or husband is as if you missed the road. Do you understand what the devil is trying to do in, with many homes? Mm. Yeah. And, and so we don't, but we don't have any, we, 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 um, nothing's happening between us. We're, we're just talking. We're just friends. But every single thing that you're supposed to be talking your with wife. your wife is what? So how many of us know that there are some gist that once you have gisted it, it has been gisted? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't understand my English, let me, let me, um, <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me speak normal English now. You know, there are, some, there are some things that if you... <laughs> so, so you all get it. You all got it. Yeah. Everybody got it? All right. Oh, no. no. Okay, you didn't get it. Okay. All right, let me, let me refresh. There are some... You, uh, you all got it. Okay. Refresh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, some people didn't get it. Some people didn't get it. Let's, let's, let's re-explain. Let's re-explain. There, <laughs> there are some things that if you have said it to one person, it's hard... To re-say it again to another person. It's like watching a movie, right? And now somebody said, let's watch it together. Sometimes you feel like, no, I, I've watched it already. You know, let's watch something watch new together. That's the same way. So everything that you, the attention, the affection, the, the fun, the gist that you're supposed to have with your wife, if you're having it with something else, it may not even be another person. If you're having it with something else, there's no way you can give the full back to that spouse anymore. It means you have not melted. Or you have melted halfway. Not fully. Remember, a frozen cook is not good for anybody. Somebody say amen. amen. Only a coconut head person it will be good for. <laughs> amen. amen. So, what does it mean to cleave? To cleave is, it's not just about joining together because, so when we say cleave, sometimes we think that it means that these two will come together. We yeah. can tie this thing together. Yeah. And say, ah, but we are joined together. Yes. But guess what? Even if they were frozen together, and because there are some times that these bottles will be so frozen that they stick together, right? So they've formed a bond. <laughs> but with the slightest heat, or slightest amount of heat, heat they separate. separate. So it's not, so it's not actually, that is, they haven't actually cleaved. They just bonded. 